stuff like that. This trace function is going to be, um, I don't really have a good example of how to use that right now because I don't have an image ready to bring in. This here is the page that will, you can set it up to whether you're going to use a 12 by 12, a letter. This is um, also good if you're using a different size piece of paper, an A4, A5. Um, landscape or portrait, whichever way you want to set your page up, what size cutting mat you're using. So that's what that is. We're going to go back to 12 by 12. This is a silhouette cut menu. And a, it's just if you know you're going to cut something that you already have ready, um, you can just click to the cut settings. You can select the kind of material you're using. And as you see, as I click that, these settings change down here. That's what their recommended settings are. So you would change your blade to a three. Um, now, cardstock, if you're cutting something that's not very intricate, then you could get by with increasing your speed. You will know this over time. Um, but if it's very intricate, you want your speed way down and your pressure not to be too high depending on the thickness of your paper. If you're using, you know, good quality um, paper like AC cardstock or, you know, coordinations or something like that, then 32, 33 is pretty good and I set mine on a 4. But I know my blade. I think everybody's blades are different sometimes and you'll know what the settings you need to use on that. If you were going to cut um, vinyl, there's a setting for vinyl in here. There's a setting for the silhouette card or uh, chipboard, which you do not want to cut regular chipboard in your silhouette. Um, it's not like the Cricut. It, it can't take the thicker uh, card stock. You're going to have to use the, the silhouette brand. Um, that's the only unfortunate thing with a silhouette that I've noticed is that I like um, to cut a little thicker cards or chipboard if I'm making an album or something, but I can live with that. Uh, the vinyl, now, if you're cutting vinyl, you can do, you can use the mat, but you also don't have to use the mat. That's why on the screen of your Cameo, it, you, it will say load mat or load media. If you're using, if you're gonna cut vinyl without a mat, that's when you use the load media. So always remember to check your screen on your Cameo because that's the first thing that I kept screwing up on is to make sure it's set to load mat if you're going to be cutting something, you know, your cardstock and stuff because so many times I forgot to do that and somehow it got bumped or whatever and then it doesn't cut in the right spot and a lot of people get frustrated and they can't figure out what is wrong. And nine times out of 10, it's because they accidentally hit load media instead of load mat. So that's the big tip of the day. And then, um, you know, we'll get into a couple other tips that I've learned along the way after, uh, after I get through this video and maybe make another one. Now, if you're using print and cut, this is where these registration marks uh, will come into effect. Um, you can see when I click show registration marks, these areas right here that are the hatches, um, that is the area that you want to keep all of your, all of your images need to be inside of that particular um, marks. Like right now, my, my images are well inside these and that's what you need to make sure if you're doing a print and cut um, that they're inside of that. And you can adjust them. Um, you can see, you can adjust them a little bit. I kind of leave mine where they are. Um, and if you're just doing a cut, you don't need to do that. That's basically for print and cut, which is going to be another video. Right here is your, your settings for your mat. Um, I have it set to, my grids are at one inch increments, which is what I really like. I, I don't want to change that. Uh, but you can see when I do that, how that changes on the screen. Everybody likes things a certain way. That's just the way I like mine. One inch increments and divisions of one. 
you can change the different colors on your mat. I'm like the blue. Um, now the crosshairs, some people like them, some people don't. Now I find that they're kind of handy if I'm doing something in particular and I'm trying to watch this ruler here. They didn't make this ruler very big and I wish you could actually move it down to your paper like you can on some programs or, or move this over so that I can see the numbers along here. It would be nice if they made the mat with numbers on the mat like like uh, you know so I wouldn't have to look at this ruler. But anyway say I want to be at six inches and I know on the right hand side I want to be at four. This is where these crosshairs, you can see it when I put my cursor down here, they're, they run left and right and up and down. That helps me line up. I can see I'm at six. I'm coming down. I can look over at the right. You see the little gray line? It helps me to stay right at the line I want to be at. I, I'm right at six. I'm right at four on the other side. I hope you see what I'm, t I'm talking about because I can't point to it. Um, so that's all of those up there. Just a quick rundown. We're going to do more with those later on. On this side, of course, this is to click what you're on at the moment. Like I got a couple boxes on here. Um, I have to use my little hand tool to, to click on what I'm wanting to change. This is to, um, this is your pivot uh, point for your, your uh, yeah, that's what it is. And you can, you know, grab a hold of them and move them different ways. Also, you can add, you can see how I got that little line in the, the arrow. You can add more of them so that you can get different, um, different curves out of it. That, that comes in handy sometimes when you're making some of your own patterns. Uh, I might do, I might make my own little pattern of something and I might need to change that a little bit. This is a rectangle, of course, makes a box. This is makes a box with curved uh, edges. This is the elliptical tool, makes a circle. And if you, you probably know this, but if you hold your mouse key down and hit the shift key at the same time and drag, you can make a perfect circle with the shift key. Um, it, I'm gonna let off the shift, shift key and you can see what I'm talking about. It, I, I will get all wonky if I don't use the shift key, see? So you want to let up off of your mouse before letting off of your shift key first. Sorry, my dogs are barking. Um, so that's that. Okay, this one here is draw a polygon. This is nice if you want to draw um, something different shaped. Let's see. And this is the thing too where I said if you go back to that um, internal offset, it will even with the weird shape things, you can make your accent pieces with it. So that's, I love that. This is draw a curve shape, which just means it's going to be a curved line. You can see the difference. And all you do is click and then you can hit the intersect. This one's freehand right here. Just, sorry. You have to click it and hold down your mouse the whole time. Don't let up on your mouse and you can draw um, whatever shape you want to draw. So, that's pretty cool. Of course, this is the text tool, just like it is up here at the uh, upper right-hand corner. Um, let me draw something here again. This here below that is a eraser, so you can change the shape and how big the circle is. You can make it big, little by dragging over that too. And it does just that. You can hold down, you have to hold down your mouse the whole time. And if I wanted to erase that, it's going to fill it in. Now, I'm going to show you the difference on the solid and outline. 
if I erase this again, see how it didn't close up? So that's the difference between those two things. Okay, let me make another box. I'm going to fill this one so that you can see it a little bit better with what I'm going to do next. Okay, so this right below the eraser is a little knife tool. You can click that. You can cut it in half. If you, if you want a straight, totally straight line, again, hit the shift button and you can see it makes a straight line. So that's great if you want to make sure that you're cutting a straight line because obviously I don't always do that even though I attempt to. But if I just wanted to cut off the, the, that angle of that box, um, now it's two, it's created two different pieces for me. If I wanted to cut straight across, I would again hold my shift down, let off my mouse first before letting up off the shift, and I got a perfectly straight line. So that, that tool is really nice. <clears throat> now this other one's not highlighted, but let me fill this with pattern. And I'll show you what this one does. You see this one didn't wasn't highlighted till I filled this with pattern. Um, now say I want this little piece here to be exactly like that one and obviously I could go over here and select the pattern again but if you also use the advanced tools and you you've created your pattern a little bit larger and you really like that you don't want to have to go through the trouble of making sure it's the same again you can just click the little piece you want to change the color of you hit this little tool here, which transfers the property of that shape. Click in it, and it's changed that color. So that's a really nice uh, tool if you're doing a whole lot of pieces and you want them to be the same color and exactly the same as what you did to that particular one. So that's that. Now, uh, this is just shows your drawing area. This is, of course, your library, which we're going to get into that on another video. I'm going to show you how to organize your library, etc. This, of course, takes you to the Silhouette Store. Um, I'm going to put this image on here, too, because I want to show you what this next one does. Um, if I'm in my library, you can see this little window here is that's the that shows the library this is where you can split the screen um, that's nice when like you were trying to look at your image here and then know what to color these things or you're trying to maybe get an idea how you want to color your pieces um, because this is a SVG file here I like to look at this and then I kind of can determine what pieces are what so that's where you can split your screen uh, you can go back to that and it's going to go right back to the, the full screen. So that is what those are. And now I'm going to um, right click and ungroup these just for a minute so I can show you um, some of the others. Okay, so these are ungrouped now. You can see I can move each individual piece, but now you have to be careful if there's pieces like this in particular and you didn't want those little circles to move at the same time you would have to regroup them but I'm going to show you how to do that let's just move some of these out of the way so um, I can show you that say I want those two those all those little circles like that you can see when I move it that those are separate because I've ungrouped this I can drag over it and it's going to highlight all of them and hit this button down here this very first one at the bottom left of your screen that's a group function. So now those move as one. If I want to ungroup them, I'm going to hit the one next to it and now it's going to be back to being individual pieces. Um, <clears throat> a lot of these are the same functions as other buttons. They're just down here. Okay, that's it for today's video and I will start working on another one which will go into more detail on how to do a lot of the various functions and very good examples of what those functions are. This is just a quick rundown. Thank you for watching.